Johnny. Hey up Johnny, what are we going up to in this video? We're going to be fitting this. Yes, you've guessed it, it's a Chinese diesel eater. So let's get on with it. Right then, I want to make a video about this uh, diesel eater that I decided I was going to because a lot of my viewers are like me and they like to work in the cold shed. Well no, they don't like to work in the cold shed but they like to work in the shed. So if that does apply to you, get one of these. I have actually done a hell of a lot of research on this because they are from a country we don't normally like to buy from and the last video that I watched convinced me that I need to buy one so I bought one and that video was of an American who actually fits these for a living but not the Chinese type he actually fits the really expensive type, the original types into camper vans, caravans lorries, even houses, even factories and he has been doing it for donkey's years and every so often he gets called back to go and uh, service them because they've broken down and people started asking him about the cheap burp 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 country diesel eaters and in the end he gave up and started fitting them and over the years everyone he has fitted he has never been back to service one because according to him they are that good supposedly so that's why I bought this one if it breaks down before the winter's out I'll leave my thumbs down <laughs> so anyway I have actually had this fitted over in the corner there When I came to do this, how you all doing? Uh, sorry about the noise. I wasn't very happy with the uh, noise in the background. It was a bit too loud for me. So I decided to make a lean to on my shed outside and put it in there. Uh, you do get a little instruction booklet with this but uh, don't bother trying to read it because it doesn't tell you anything about how you're supposed to use it apart from priming the uh, fuel line but I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of uh, my experience with this I've had this for uh, it's December now and I bought it in the beginning of October so I've had it for about five weeks I'm pretty happy with it it's not brilliantly hot but it makes the shed out of a lot warmer especially on the frosty days I'll show you what I did to put it all together uh, you just get these two induction pipes one there and one there which I just go on by the uh, Jubilee clips yes the exhaust sticks out there like that you do get uh, a silencer to stick on the end of a Jubilee clip if we look underneath there, you can see the uh, air filter pipe and you can see the exhaust pipe and you can actually see the fuel pipe and that exhaust does get pretty hot and to me that fuel pipe is a bit close and I've still got the green pipes on, they do recommend that you take the green pipes off and buy some white pipe, fuel pipe so I've just made this up with a bit of tin and a bit of and a bit of heat reflective tape put around it and what I do with that is put it in between the exhaust and the fuel pipe uh, on my one there is no inline but I would recommend that you fit one because these are a bit like your motorcycle you can buy anything you want for it you can buy the exhaust pipe, 200 foot long, if you want to. If you can buy the fuel pumps, you can buy the fuel line, you can buy the uh, induction pipes as long as you want them. You can even buy like a T-junction, so you can have two pipes coming out, 
going to either side of your shed you can buy absolutely anything you want for these even the parts inside they're, they're all readily available on eBay so yes as you can see the uh, induction air filter pipe just fits onto there with a Jubilee clip same with the exhaust pipe just fits onto there with a Jubilee clip I would recommend putting some uh, exhaust sealant around the, the pipe before you fit it because you don't want to be working in your shed full of carbon monoxide so I bought one of these which I leave just over there on the battery charger as these diesel heaters are for like inside your vehicle they run off your battery obviously I did watch a few YouTube channels where they use an Xbox brick power supply Xbox One where they screw all the yellows together which are the live screw all the blacks together which are the negative and screw the uh, blue and red together which is the on and off switch and then just join them to your diesel heater wires red is obviously live but unfortunately online it had a nice green light on the indicator light as soon as I started to fire the diesel heater up it started to fire up and then the indicator light would start to turn orange and then go red and switch off so so I'm just assuming that this is faulty because I have seen other people using them for over a year on YouTube but anyway I just went back to how they should be run and that battery there is for the Triumph Tiger that battery over there is for the CBR1000F landfill bike which keeps going flat and that is the one I've been using to run my diesel heater and it's been working perfectly for some weird reason and uh, whenever I'm running the diesel heater I do switch on the battery charger it's only a low amp battery charger but it is helping me to keep nice and warm in my man cave so let me put it together how it should be that should be like that make sure the fuel pipe's not going to get trapped some people do put a zip tie around the shelf but the shelf is very flimsy anyway so I just leave mine like that uh, you have to take the cap off to put the hood on plop that on there like that just make sure it does seat right because that should be back there and there should be there's two little holes there which go into the bottom of those screws so make sure you seat that properly here we go that's the front bit in properly that's the back bit in properly you can put our cap back on and then we just use these gizmo clips same on the back and if we spin that round uh, on mine I put these blocks of wood on because if you just try to sit those legs onto the bench or onto wherever you're going to store this not store it wherever you're going to have this mounted the exhaust no matter how tight you bend it will just interfere and your unit won't be very stable it'll be rocking about on the exhaust so I just put those two blocks of wood on to uh, give it some height I'm sure you've all seen them but this is what the uh, front of the unit looks like it's just your control panel the main thing to know when you buy these is that the fuel line will be empty and it is quite a long fuel line going all the way up to the pump and then back down to the tank buy it particularly one you press and hold OK then you press up and down at the same time but you have to do it perfectly at the same time or it won't work so you might have to do it a couple of times before you get it right and then you'll start hearing the pump going and 
said, if you look at the fuel line, obviously you'll have this cover off, and you will see the fuel coming out of the tank into the pipe very slowly on each pumping sound. And then when it obviously reaches the bottom, you know it's primed and it's safe to turn it on. Then you just press on this one. On my one, you just press the on button and it will come on, but it's not going to come on at the moment because it's not connected. And I'm in the process of moving this outside into my box. So as you see earlier, it was actually sitting there and it was going through the hole just there. But now it's going to sit out there and come through that hole there. Uh, yes, yeah, some of you loyal fans will have noticed that I've had a bit of a change around in my shed. Over in this corner there used to be a little chest of drawers with a log burner sitting on the top. Quietly waiting for its moment to burn my shed down. But that didn't happen because I removed it before it had the chance and all the logs and bits of wood that I had stored to throw into my log burner I had a very peaceful relaxing night doing this with it. Yes, that's one way to uh, singe your whiskers, I guess. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to ask you guys that are following the Triumph Tiger project, if you could please drop me a comment with a name to give my Triumph Tiger. And whoever picks the name I want to use, I'll give you a shout out in my next video. So there you go, just my little video on the uh, Chinese diesel eater. Would I buy one? Of course, I've already got one. And if you're thinking of getting one, hopefully my video has twisted your arm. But if you don't like it, don't blame me. And on that note... I'll see you in another life, brother. Right then, let me put this back out there in the lean-to where it belongs. And you lot have a very Merry Christmas and an Happy New Year. And I hope I do too. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>